In just 10 years, Pope Francis has had a world-changing papacy. From viral moments to global travel to groundbreaking papal documents, the Pope has made a profound impact on the Catholic Church and the world. To commemorate Francis's 10th anniversary, America's editors have chosen what we think are the top 10 most influential moments of Francis's papacy so far. Let's dive in. Number one, his historic election. Pope Francis was a wild card, not the pick many commentators were predicting to step out onto that St. Peter's Basilica balcony after the March 2013 papal conclave. But on many fronts, he was a historic first for the papacy. First Jesuit Pope, first Latin American Pope, in fact, the first from the Global South, and the first with a new name, Francis. Inspired by St. Francis of Assisi, the name choice indicated the particular style and priorities that would guide the new Pope. Simplicity, peace, care for the poor, and for the planet. Number two, Pope Francis gave his first interview as Pope to a group of Jesuit journals from around the world, including America, which we published under the headline, A Big Heart Open to God. The conversation was extensive, covering a wider range of topics than you've seen in most papal interviews, from why he joined the Jesuits, to his favorite books and movies, to how he prays each day. And though he spoke about the future of the church and his role as its leader, much of the interview's tone was informal and personally revealing. Memorably, when asked the seemingly simple question that would kick off the conversation, who is Jorge Mario Bergoglio, the Pope responded with, I am a sinner. This is the most accurate definition. It is not a figure of speech, a literary genre. I am a sinner. This interview inaugurated a new form of papal communication not ever seen before. Number three, two important papal documents. One of the qualities that sets Pope Francis apart is his joy. Many who meet him remark it's visible and contagious. In what's considered his first exclusive papal teaching, Evangelii Gaudium, meaning the joy of the gospel, he says, an evangelizer must never look like someone who has just come back from a funeral. He called for a church which is poor and for the poor, and said he prefers a church which is bruised, hurting, and dirty because it has been out on the streets, rather than a church which is unhealthy from being confined and from clinging to its own security. In many ways, this illuminating document is a blueprint for his pontificate. Second, Predicate Evangelium, which applies that missionary impulse of Evangelii Gaudium to the reform of the Vatican's bureaucracy. When Pope Francis published his constitution for the reform of the Roman Curia, he reached a goal set by the cardinals who elected him. The constitution made several significant changes, allowing laypeople to hold governing roles in the church, formally making the protection of minors a part of the Curia structure, and decentralizing church government as a whole in favor of a more synodal approach. The total reform of the Curia to emphasize its missionary focus may in fact be the longest lasting structural change Pope Francis leaves behind. Number four, where would you guess a Pope might go for his first appearance outside of Rome? No one expected Pope Francis's answer to be Lampedusa, a small Italian island off the coast of North Africa, where he celebrated mass in July, 2013. The island is a site where thousands of migrants seeking asylum have arrived, and also where many of those migrants died on the journey that they hoped would bring them to safety and a better life. Pope Francis was clear in where he put the responsibility for this tragedy, on those in power and our collective indifference to the suffering of our brothers and sisters. Lord, we ask forgiveness for those who with their laws and decisions have created situations that have led to these tragedies. Care for migrants and refugees has remained a pillar of the Francis papacy, and it's a challenge he issues to all of us by example. In Francis's worldview, the suffering of others, particularly the poorest and the most marginalized, is not something we can or should look away from. Number five, Pope Francis's papal record on LGBT issues began with a particularly viral moment. Flying back to Rome after World Youth Day in Rio de Janeiro in 2013, the Pope responded to a reporter's question about gay priests at the Vatican with a response that has become arguably the most talked about moment of his papacy. If a person is gay and seeks the Lord and has goodwill, well, who am I to judge them? His comment set a tone for a different kind of dialogue with LGBT Catholics and beyond, for Francis, this approach only reflects the official catechism of the Catholic Church, which states that gay people, quote, must be accepted with respect, compassion, and sensitivity. His leadership has been about seeing each individual as a human being who deserves to be known, loved, and understood. And that includes LGBT people as much as anyone else. We'll get back to our top 10 list in a moment, but we want to let you know about the Disaster Services Corporation, also known as DSC. DSC is a nonprofit and Catholic lay organization that prevents families from falling into situational poverty due to disasters. It is a wholly owned subsidiary corporation of the National Council of the United States, Society of St. Vincent de Paul. House in a Box is one of the most well-known programs operated by DSC. 
House in a Box provides new furnishings to disaster survivors who are forced into situational poverty. The House in a Box gives dignity to families in crisis as it provides them with a new and fresh start. All families receive the same new items which are packaged for efficiency of delivery. The program is scalable to the size of the family and starts at $3,200 for a family of four. One package includes beds, linens, dishes, pots and pans, dressers, silverware, bathroom setup, dinette, and a couch. Please consider giving the gift of a fresh start to a disaster survivor family. Donate at www.svdpdisaster.org. Number six. With the publication of his 2015 encyclical Laudato Si, Pope Francis brought a spiritual perspective and a social justice lens to the climate crisis. For him, care for creation is linked to care for the poor and the refugee. And the Catholic Church has a moral responsibility to work with modern science, to keep the planet and its inhabitants safe for generations to come. But Francis's solution is deeper than policy or project, though those are certainly important parts. He calls for an ecological conversion, changing our hearts and minds so that solidarity with creation and care for neighbor take the place of indifference, selfishness, and in his words, a throwaway culture. Number seven, if Pope Francis has his way, synodality will be the way of the Catholic Church's future. The Synod of Bishops first began to take shape after Vatican II in the 1960s as a meeting of bishops to meet with and advise the Pope. But Francis has fleshed out the model, reforming its structure and procedures so that the whole church plays a part. If you only take one thing away about synodality, it should be this. The model is based on listening to a wide range of people with a wide range of experiences all over the world. The synods under Pope Francis have surfaced contentious debates about hot-button issues among Catholics, and no one knows where the journey will lead the Church. Francis believes the goal is to pay attention to where the Holy Spirit is calling the Church, working together to find unity in our diversity. Number eight. Pope Francis has made international travel a hallmark of his papacy, and his summer 2022 visit to Canada is emblematic of his commitment to meeting people where they are. Francis went to apologize on behalf of the Catholic Church for its role in the abuse and forced assimilation of Indigenous people in the country's residential school system, a visit that Indigenous people have long called for. He said the policies of the residential schools were catastrophic and incompatible with the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he begged for forgiveness. Number nine, in Pope Francis's view, world religions must build the future together. His friendship with the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar has modeled the productivity and beauty of interreligious dialogue and has inspired one of the major themes of his papacy, promoting human fraternity. This idea eventually turned into the encyclical Fratelli Tutti. The two leaders jointly signed a document titled A Document on Human Fraternity for World Peace and Living Together in 2019 and have appeared publicly together on numerous occasions, including at the first ever International Day of Human Fraternity in 2021, when Pope Francis addressed the Grand Imam as my brother, my friend, my companion of challenges and risks in the struggle for fraternity. While he and the Grand Imam come from different faiths, Pope Francis is eager to highlight what Catholicism and Islam have in common that human beings are created by God and are called to live together as brothers and sisters. Number 10, restricting the celebration of the traditional Latin mass, the mass celebrated before the reforms of Vatican II, has undoubtedly been one of the most contentious decisions of Francis's papacy. In a 2021 motu proprio, which is a decree signed personally by the Pope on his own initiative, titled Tradiciones Custodes, meaning guardians of the tradition, Francis overturned the policy of Pope Benedict XVI, effectively suppressing the traditional Latin Mass. In a letter accompanying the decree, the Pope explained the celebration of the traditional Latin Mass was, in many places, linked to a rejection of Vatican II's reforms, and therefore posed a threat to the Church's unity. The decision caused a lot of pain among Catholics drawn to the traditional Mass, and earned the Pope many critics, who say he acted in an uncharacteristically authoritarian manner. 10 Moments for 10 Years but Pope Francis has left his mark on the church in countless moments, bringing his personal touch to the Vatican, the church hierarchy, and to each and every community he has visited around the world. We'd love to know your favorite moments, the ones that might not have made it onto this list, but have been memorable and special to you. And as he asked us to in his first papal appearance, let's pray for Pope Francis. In thanksgiving for 10 meaningful years and with hope for many more moments to come. Thanks for watching. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting that red subscribe button. And if you like the video, the best way to support us is by purchasing a digital subscription from America. You can do that at americamagazine.org slash subscribe. Thanks.